I want to talk to you this morning about growing your faith. Right. I know most of you have been in the church for years, lifetime members, yeah. <laughs> born and raised on the pew. But you know there's a bunch of us who were born and raised on the pew who didn't hear what was to be heard. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And there's so much for us to learn. Yeah. And and I'm I'm 76 years of age, soon to be 77, and I'm learning more every day. Yeah. And it's important yes, that we learn. Amen. So I'm going to talk to you about growing your faith and living your faith. Everybody said, "Growing my faith." Growing, growing my, my faith. faith. Living my faith. Living my faith. It's important for us to recognize that this is more important than just speaking the words. Yes. This is actual doing. So we're going to be talking about this. There, we have to build a foundation. What's happened to us over the years, and I, and I say this uh, uh, detrimentally to my own <coughs> self, is we never learn to build a foundation for the faith that we think we have. Yeah, that's right. And mm -hmm. faith is a formative yeah. action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need to build a foundation for our faith. Yeah. And so we're going to talk to you this morning about uh, hearing, speaking, and doing. Yes. And so... Hearing the word initiates faith. Yes. Speaking the word activates faith. And doing the word demonstrates faith. Yes, amen. Praise God. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And so, it's hear, do, and speak. I'm not content just to motivate you to want to live with the audacious faith. And audacious faith is faith that is daring, bold, brave. And I think we sang a song this morning said, let's have a revival. Mm -hmm. That's more than just words. Mm -hmm. yes, amen. Yes. If you're just speaking it or just singing it, it just goes into the air, that's where it stays. Yes. Yes. But it's got to become part of your life. Yes, amen. It's got to become part of your life. So, so I want to enable you to develop your faith. It's one thing to want to trust God to do the impossible things mm -hmm. through your life. It's another thing to get to that place where you're able to trust Him at that level. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to recognize we can get there it's, you know, we, we can want, everybody, we got a lot of wannabes. Mm -hmm. A lot of wannabes. They want yeah. to be, uh, they want to demonstrate God's power. They want to do the God's power. But what happens is they, they, they have not built a foundation for their faith. All they've done is talked about things that they've heard other people talk about and things that excite yeah. them, yeah. but they never allow themselves to grow Amen. into the Word of God. Amen. It's important for us to, to know the Word of God. I've told you this for years. You, you've got to get the Word in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And the only way you get the Word in your heart is by reading the Word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we look at this. Now, we just had a friend who had a heart transplant. Why is that so big? <laughs> We just had a friend who had a heart transplant. It's amazing to me what they can do. Heart transplant, liver transplant, yeah. lung transplant. Yeah. It's amazing. But this man, this man was, had heart trouble for many, many years. And so finally one day they called him and said, they put him on, they said he was a candidate for a heart transplant. And so what they did then is they said, now you've got to be ready. You can't get away from this. You can't get away from here more than two hours. Mm -hmm. So during one December, mm -hmm. I get a call about 9 o'clock Houston time. They're taking him to the hospital. And they're going to do the transplant. They found a heart. They're going to do the transplant. They, they, they go to Detroit to pick up the heart. They leave Detroit before they, on their way back, they call Grand Rapids. They said, I want you to get him ready. 
they took him into the operating room, began to take his old heart out. When they got there, they placed that heart in him, and he began to pump, and he's up today walking, yeah. doing physical therapy. But that's but so no one can transplant a heart of faith into you right. like a new body part. Right. That can't happen. The, you know, they, they, that's so many neat things that they're doing, but you cannot, you cannot transplant faith. Yeah. I mean, have you ever been around somebody who's full of faith and they're dynamic mm -hmm. and they believe God and, and they see great things happening? Uh, my experience over the lifetime was uh, there was a man by the name of Henderson, Hendrickson, and he was from uh, across, I think, Ireland, and he was talking about the move of God in his church, and this has been many years ago, back in the 70s, and I remember go going to where he, was, where he was at, and I sat at his feet, and I said, tell me everything that's going on in your church and what the Spirit's doing. I sat there for hours listening to what God's Spirit was doing in the church in Ireland with a hunger in my heart that I, I, I want to be there. Yeah. I want to be there. And it, but he couldn't transplant faith into me. You can't just take, put it in your, in your life. You can't just pull it out and take out the doubt. You've got to build a foundation. Yeah. You've got to build a foundation for your faith. What's happened to the church is you've lived around this thing for so many of your years that you have, you have lost the audacity or the audaciousness yeah. of your faith. Mm -hmm. You pray, and if it happens, thank God. If it doesn't, thank God. Mm -hmm. It was His will. No, it's not mm -hmm. His will. It's not His will that we're ill, that we're sick, but He wants us to know that by His yes. stripes we yeah. are healed. Yeah. So, you got to go to the Word. And so when you've got a position, you're, you're in a position where you, you don't know what's happening and you don't know what's going on, you got to go to the Word. Find the Word of God that covers your situation. Yeah. Every Amen. situation is covered in this book. Yeah. Amen. 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 Every situation. Mm -hmm. And so we see it working on us. Now, uh, it's amazing to me. And I'm not saying this, that you're on your own and, and this thing or the, this is the thing or that. You have to work up some feeling of faith through your own effort. I don't believe that. You have to build it. You're not by yourself. You're not on your own. For there is millions of Christians across the world exercising audacious faith right alongside you. They're doing it. Have you heard about it? Some of the miraculous things that's happening. We just we just heard about we just heard about a man that broke his leg. And God healed his leg. Broken in two places and God healed it. We've heard about cancer being healed. Yes, We've amen. heard about several things being healed. God is absolutely working. Mm -hmm. and, and so my belief is that if whether the Lord Jesus Christ comes for the church, that the church is going to be in a place where they're demonstrating the power of God, right. yeah. Yeah. irregardless right. of what the world might think. Yeah. Amen. We are living, we are living in crisis time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think Paul said, peerless times shall come yeah. when men are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Have we ever seen it like this right. in America? Right. Our government is sell selling our country down the drain. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're losing their confidence in the Word of God. They've lost their confidence mm -hmm. in the Word of God. And they don't trust the Word of God. So we've got to recognize, you're not out here by yourself. There are millions of Christians across the world exercising this audacious faith. And of course, there, there's the divine presence of the power of God or the power of the Holy Spirit that's within you. We've got to recognize that we have to be filled with the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. I think I taught here some time ago about, about speaking in tongues mm -hmm. often, often, praying in tongues, making that your prayer mm -hmm. language, yeah. praying in tongues often, that what happens is if you pray in tongues, and I think it's important that we do this often, because when you're praying in tongues, what happens to us is that our spirit, the spirit within us, which is the spirit of God, mm -hmm. begins to bring to our attention things that need to be improved on in our mm -hmm. life, and he'll speak to you while you're talking. You see, the Bible said, he that prayeth in an unknown tongue, he speaks to God. Yes. Nobody understands what he's doing, but yeah. God is praying yeah. to God. And the Holy Spirit knows our needs mm -hmm. even more than we know our own. I remember I 